This is the alternative uh, meeting for uh, Saturday, January, uh, January uh, October 22nd, 2022. And uh, my name is uh, Dr. Dennis Allen Jr. and I'll be presenting on uh, foundations of Gucci and mechanics. And the basics, which by which I mean the conceptual basis of uh, Gucci's, Godfrey J. Gushki's mechanics. He's written a number of books on mechanics, all of which are on Amazon.com. We can view them. And the latest one is uh, Inertial Propulsion and You Thought It's Impossible. And uh, he stopped uh, publishing, though, in January of 2021. What is uh, the thing about Gucci and mechanics? that makes it different from Newton's mechanics. Well, first of all, it's not an F equals MA mechanics like uh, uh, Newton's mechanics is and, and relativistic mechanics too, except that in relativistic mechanics, the mass can increase with, re with velocity. It's not a constant. In fact, it does increase with velocity. So uh, this is quite a stretch away from uh, anything that uh, I've ever run across is a, a, a mathematical theory of mechanics. Here's the contents. There's only four chapters and two appendices, and it's in large print. And it's not designed not to be a hard read. Uh, acknowledgements, I think, uh, Nick, for example. Uh, now, introduction, uh, talking about Godfrey, how he immigrated to Canada from uh, uh, Germany, and uh, uh, he, uh, he rejects the, uh, the uh, Newtonian idea that uh, uh, linear and uh, angular momentum need to be conserved where the angular momentum has to be with respect to a fixed point or a center of mass. That's, uh, that's one of the most crucial parts of Newton's mechanics. And, uh, but he does accept conservation of energy. And, and uh, I go into uh, why I think he does. He was grew up in war-torn Germany where they had uh, no fuel after the war except uh, wood to burn and so on. And uh, this, so they, he was into utility rather than high-powered mathematics. And uh, utility is, has to do with energy, uh, work, which does work then. Like in the, the gasoline in your tank is uh, essentially energy, which does work and runs your car. And, and the... Uh, if you have a uh, coal, uh, coal furnace, as they did in those days, the coal would be the uh, utility, the energy. So anyway, that's my theory on why he uh, went for energy over mathematics, which most people do nowadays. Uh, okay, now uh, this is uh, getting started here. Uh, there's uh, the, the four formulas of uh, kinematics, which come from uh, the Oxford Dictionary of Physics, sixth edition. And here the acceleration is constant. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, rather, but uh, Godfrey goes one step beyond this. He takes the acceleration to be linear, so its time derivative is constant. Uh, so uh, that's good, of course, from the viewpoint of Neonatonian theory, because if the, if the time derivative of the acceleration vanishes, then uh, there's no mass gain whatsoever, no matter what the acceleration is, how large it is. And so I, that, uh, that's very fortunate with respect to uh, Neonatonian mechanics. All right, now uh, I go on to a little bit here of uh, uh, why he rejects the idea essentially of F equals MA. Uh, 
Uh, well, he uh, the acceleration is a second order abstraction. The first order would be velocity, and the second order would be acceleration. Now, uh, for example, Professor Robert E. Keen has a series of six ebooks, non equilibrium systems and irreversible processes. He result also rejects instantaneous acceleration for much the same reason, namely it's an abstract idealization of reality, which then must be avoided for best results. And uh, and also in logic, uh, the, the, uh, there's a first order logic, which is basically Aristotle's logic, uh, abstracted one degree, uh, one uh, order of abstraction. And uh, there's a theorem that every, uh, true theorem, a meta theorem, that every true theorem in the first order logic is, has a proof in the first order logic. So if it's, if it's true, it's provable. However, Gödel, Gödel, uh, Kurt Gödel proved that the second order logic, another a second abstraction from uh, reality, uh, was not complete. It, there were many uh, uh, true theorems which didn't have uh, proofs in that logic. And so difficulty arises here again. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, let's go further into this F equals MA business. Uh, he, uh, he, he's a uh, thinking is grounded in the following. Uh, there's two experiments that are key to his way of thinking. The first is by Galileo, where he had uh, an inclined plane with a notch every so long, like maybe a foot or something, uh, or uh, you know, a half a foot or whatever. So he had these notches in the inclined plane, he ran a cannonball down, started out and let it roll down, and the times were like uh, 1 over 1, 1 over 4, 1 over 9, 1 over 16, and so on. In other words, the, the cannonball picked up speed, and so the time between hitting notches goes off as 1 over n squared, if you get the, if you make the units right. Now, uh, <coughs> The, the uh, distance is constant, but the time is varying. Uh, and uh, this is going to come in in uh, Newton's uh, proof of, uh, of uh, the uh, period of a, a simple pendulum that isn't swinging too, too widely, and the angle of swing is small. And because uh, he's going to show that Newton starts out with his time derivative, but he ends up with a, with a distance derivative, where the distance is in the denominator. Now, uh, uh, there's another experiment, though, due to Newton, uh, which is the second most important one in Gusky's thinking, and that is where uh, you, uh, instead of a uh, setting the notches that the bowling, the, the uh, cannonball hits at equal distances, he sets it at times at, at so that uh, the cannonball will hit the, the, uh, the notches, you know, and make a noise uh, at, each, at equal times rather than equal distances. And uh, so that means that uh, then, uh, the distances in Newton's experiment would be 1, 4, 9, 16. In other words, it would be n squared rather than 1 over n squared in uh, Galileo's uh, key experiment with, with an inclined plane and a cannonball rolling down. And uh, a lot of people say, well, so, you know, that makes sense. I mean, 1 over n squared is n squared, and then 1, one over n, you know, and so on. But uh, Gottfried noticed that this wasn't actually quite true. So uh, 
he uh, he he says that uh, uh, Galileo's experiment has to do with energy in his mind, whereas Newton's experiment has to do with momentum. And uh, <clears throat> uh, nowadays, uh, momentum and energy are sort of on an even par in, in classical mechanics because uh, the Allenberg showed that uh, energy is, uh, or work rather, is just force through distance. And uh, so force is equal to energy divided by distance. So the distance is in the denominator, whereas momentum is force through time. And dividing by time, you get uh, energy, you get uh, momentum. Uh, and uh, with uh, time in the denominator, and uh, so uh, uh, there's this uh, dichotomy: either you key on distance or you key on time. D'Alembert basically showed that to most people's uh, at the time believe he had shown that energy and momentum are on on a par, and uh, one is integration of force through distance that's uh, energy, and one is work and force, one is uh, force through time and that's momentum. Right, but Gushi rejects this and he says, no, uh, energy uh, uh, conservation is much more important than uh, momentum uh, conservation. And uh, so he uh, modifies Newton's mechanics accordingly. Now, uh, here, Gushki believes that Newton's version of the above mentioned notch board experiment was what led him conceptually to his second and third laws of motion. That is, his, Newton's experiment where the, uh, the uh, times were the same, but the distances were, uh, yeah, the distances were. Okay, and, uh, and, and the trouble then with his second law was that it was a big advantage, of course, which made things simple, but it was too simple. Uh, here's his uh, a typical one of his uh, formulas for force. The average force is equal to the mass times the difference between the uh, initial, initial velocity subtracted from the terminal velocity divided by twice the distance. And he and here's the thing he pointed out. This is equal to m times the velocity gain, that is v1 minus v2, times the average velocity, which is v1 plus v2 over 2, all divided by distance in the denominator. So uh, that's, uh, that's how he looks at force. And there's a uh, time is not in the denominator distance. It's in the denominator. Okay. All right, now, uh, uh, here he's gotten away from uh, differential equations, which is, uh, of course, the Newtonian approach. He's talking about velocity gain and velocity average, which is... Uh, you know, giving the average force instead of the instantaneous force. Okay, but where does Gushi think that Newton went wrong? Newton uh, wrote in his, uh, this is uh, Gushi's version of Newton's, uh, no, this is uh, Stephen Hawking's book, uh, uh, On the Shoulder of Giants, I think it was, was the title. It gives the pages and so on. Newton is quoted as, while well, doing a little hand waving, saying in regard to such pendulum experiments, where the pendulum is uh, going around in funny ways, not just a simple pendulum, from such kind of reflections referred as to as translations today, also sometimes arise a circular motion of bodies about their own centers. But these are cases which I will not consider in what follows, and it would be too tedious to demonstrate every particular that relates to the subject. Well, <laughs> that's called hand waving, you know. And uh, so uh, Gushi said, "No, I don't think so." Uh, 
his his problem was uh can't seem to locate it here of course his problem with f equals m a is that in complicated situations uh f to compute f you need to know more than m and a and multiply them together uh However, if you do have a force function, that and physically, not mathematically, but if you figured out a force function, then you can get acceleration by dividing that force function by the mass. So that sounds like, wait a minute here, uh, A equals F over M, but shouldn't then F equals MA? Well, no, because uh, the force is, uh, uh, you know, in F equals MA, you don't know the velocity of the object at any time. You do know you can integrate the acceleration to get the velocity up to an arbitrary constant, but that arbitrary constant can be any number at all. So the problem with Newton's F equals MA is that uh, when, when, uh, the when you're in a complicated situation, you need to know the velocities too, not just the acceleration, which only gives you the velocity in terms of uh, an arbitrary constant, which is anything. All right, all right. Now I talk about uh, uh, Mike Gamble, who was uh, formerly a supervisor for Boeing, and who gave a talk a Tesla. Uh, there was two a uh, joint meeting between Tesla Tech and the Integrity Research Institute, and he gave talks on the 215 on, in both uh, meetings. But the one in the IRI meeting was blowing approved and gave a lot of uh, facts which people didn't know too much about, uh, and would never have come to light if it hadn't been for an earthquake. Uh, let me uh, go back to here. Uh, all right, now this is a slideshow to that 215 talk, IRI talk uh, by Michael Mike Gamble, who was a uh, Boeing supervisor uh, at, of their IP uh, program. Okay, notice the Boeing approval number. This is approved by Boeing. And it's 2014 because it took them a year to get the thing approved. They had to run it through twice. All right, well, we, so uh, uh, E equals one, cap, low, uppercase E equals one half lowercase M B capital uppercase B squared, and e, little e, lowercase E is one half large M lower B squared. Now, uh, that's, that's very confusing, but Godfrey insisted on this. So uh, uh, if we multiply, uh, this by uh, capital M over little m. On the right, on the, uh, no, oh, little m over capital M we're going to multiply by so that the left side becomes 1. Now, lowercase m times e, since uh, e is in, in terms of lowercase m, is equal to 1 half lowercase m squared, uppercase v squared, and uh, lowercase e times... Uh, Capital M is one half capital M squared V squared capital V squared, and the quotient is one. So that means that uh, lowercase M times E is equal to uppercase M times little e. Uh, so he defines a new concept on the basis of notes noticing this. Uh, uh, it's a hybrid concept, concept, and it lies between momentum and kinetic energy. And the derivative of this quantity with respect to the scalar momentum is just the scalar momentum itself. Now, what is this concept? Mechanical kinetic energy momentum. Quite a mouthful. And having formula one half lower m squared. Now he's got lower. He switched to a lower v squared. So in other words, the uh, this may helpfully be viewed either as half the dot product of momentum with itself, or else the product of mass and kinetic energy. And this is conserved. Uh, he gives the example of a gun which fired uh, 
the the uh, uh, bullet gets more kinetic energy than the gun. You know, uh, as far as the, uh, so this means then that uh, although a mass accumulates because of gravity, uh, energy goes off to the low, uh, decrease to uh, it, it dis accumulates, you might say, it, it unaccumulates. And then, then he proclaims that momentum is conserved in the energy form of kinetic energy using his hybrid concept. So he does get a certain type of conservation of momentum, but it's in terms of the momentum dotted with itself over two, which is equal to the kinetic energy multiplied by the mass. Okay, now he, uh, he's he got uh, uh, just Mark two, and then he's got a Mark three and Mark four since then, which can climb a nine degree ramp slowly. It's an inertial propulsion device. And you can go look under, uh, G G U T S C H E one in YouTube, and you get a bunch of uh, his videos, none of which uh, I like very much because you know, then I say that uh, 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 Eric Lathwaite was way too good of a showman, and that's why he got ostracized. Well, Gushki seems to be the other way around. And you watch his uh, videos, and you're not sure what he's doing. <laughs> But yeah, that may be just me because I'm not into equipment. Okay, now this is, he's realizing the, the dream of Eric Lathwaite of applying electric circuit theory to mechanics. Gushki is an electrical engineer. And, uh, that's, and that's why his mechanics is two-dimensional. It has to do with the complex numbers, which are two-dimensional over the real numbers. And uh, so that's why his mechanic turns out to be two-dimensional. So when he uses the complex numbers, he's usually using uh, two vectors. He's actually considering them to be two vectors. So, but that, but what about most things are three dimensional? You know, well, his machines can all be reduced to two dimensions. It seems. Uh, okay, some further remarks. Uh, there's two uh, possible cures to make it three dimensional. Most likely, a three-dimensional generalization would be uh, the quaternions over the real numbers, which uh, are very similar to the complex numbers over the real numbers, except they're non-commutative. Uh, a times B is not necessarily equal to B times A. All right. Or, it may, he, on pages 146 to 151 of Gushki's IP book that we're talking about, Nurse propulsion, you thought it's impossible. He mentions that he uh, re reproduces with permission from the University of Texas the Surrey Frenet three dimensional differential curve theory, but restricted to two dimensions by just assuming that the torsion that's in the third dimension would be identically zero. And so it appears that his IP mechanics may well be generalized to three dimensions by the use of this differential curve theory. So it then could be used to analyze the Boeing control moment gyro's IP technology, inertial propulsion technology, involving the scissoring of two spinning rotors in three space. See above. One last thing, Ian. I've got another book, an earlier book on uh, inertial propulsion too. And here is the uh, title. Uh, although it, it cuts off the title, of course, but... Uh, uh, it's, I'm going to send you those four attachments that we, we went through today on the, uh, on the talk to all those who had attended. Uh, if you, if you attended and you don't get one, it's me messing up, send me an email and I'll make sure to send this, uh, these four. So this is the last book. I'm not going to go into that, but just, uh, I just wanted to mention that there, there there is another book on nurse proposed. Are there any uh, questions or comments here? Well, Dennis, would you say it's more accurate to say that Newtonian mechanics forbids inertial propulsion or that a la the hand waving 
he made a false assumption to simplify things and give an approximation. Yeah, I think that was it. I think Newton was plenty smart enough to realize that there was a little problem here. And uh, but uh, you know, he he, uh, uh, he already had invented the calculus and everything. And, and you have to understand that Newton, for Newton, uh, physics was his day job. What he, his night job, which he really liked, was alchemy, which he spent roughly two and a half times the amount of time as he did on his physics. With the idea, apparently, of becoming incredibly wealthy by transferring, transforming base metals like lead or tin into gold. And uh, he has a distant uh, relative, uh, Keynes of Keynesian economics, who somehow came into all his work, his scrolls on uh, Newton's scrolls on uh, alchemy and. There's a famous picture of him you can see on the internet if you hunt around, where he's holding one up and, and underneath it says, these are all completely worthless or something like that. But the thing was, uh, Newton, Newton only did uh, mechanics because uh, he had made the mistake of saying that he didn't believe in the Blessed Trinity, and uh, which is, uh, was uh, heresy uh, in the English church at that time. And uh, uh, so his, his uh, colleagues told him basically that apparently that uh, it's, he better do a lot of physics or they'll turn him in. <laughs> and it wasn't, jails weren't nice in those days. So uh, that's, that's the, what I gather from uh, Christensen's book, uh, In the Presence of the Creator, The Life and Times of Isaac Newton, which you might want to get a copy of if you're interested. All right, uh, so uh, yeah, I think uh, Newton knew that, that things were, he made things a little too simple, but uh, you know, he was probably worried about, uh, he was on the trail of uh, all this wealth and uh, you know, he didn't really have time to mess around with fine points, you know. Just a comment um, about the simultaneous conservation of uh, momentum and energy in, in Newtonian mechanics. It seems on the face of it that, that that cannot be the case. I mean, in one case you have mv conserved, and in another case you have mv squared. Um, it's exactly the same in um, electrical engineering where charge is conserved, say, uh, CV, you know, the, the capacity times the voltage, yeah. and at the same time, energy is conserved, a half CV squared. So I if you do that, you find um, that, that if it's conser if charge is conserved or if momentum is conserved, you find that uh, uh, there's a lacking of the energy. So, so you know, uh, w when the si two systems are combined, you have two masses maybe, yeah. uh, or two charges. Uh, and then they postulate, they say, oh, the, the remainder went away in, in the sound when you had an impact or a spark when you you brought the capacitors together or whatever. So, so that's just one comment. Just one other brief comment, uh, a bit negative, but um, <laughs> you, you know, the, the, the Gucci's book, which, which you, obviously um, I have a copy kindly supplied actually by you, Denny. Um, it's a very hard read. Uh, I'm sorry to say that. I, I, obviously he's not a native uh, speaker, but it, it sort of jumbled a lot of uh, information together and it, it's very, very hard to decipher. Yeah, that's why I wrote my book. I told him, uh, you know, you need to, uh, but, you know, he, he, uh, he was, uh, he was not an easy man to convince of that. Even if you were right, you know, if he then made up his mind, uh, that was it, basically. Uh, my question, so in general, I just started reading the paper. If you have something rotating this in this axis okay because i can yeah. see my screen and let's just say it's unbalanced so yeah. it's, it's it's got a wobble and yeah. you've got uh, uh, an axis this way yeah and so it's wobbling and you've got this thing going on this harmonic yeah. motion, and you're trying to stabilize it here but it's yeah. really just shaky yeah. oh, you can't really <laughs> it's hard to see well then in another axis if you have another thing rotating in this plane so one's in this plane, one's in this, and this one has a wobble, and this one yeah. has a wobble. Well, if you can synchronize the wobbles, and you can transfer some of the energy in the 
the system that's holding it. It's almost like, to me, like somebody's throwing a yo-yo at you. They're throwing a yo-yo at you. If they hit you, they'll bounce you back. Yeah. Well, if they keep hitting you and keep hitting you, 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 but the thing is, is you're still hooked to the same ground. So how are you both actually inching along in the same direction? So it must be that you're trans, you have to keep sw speeding up one that's slowing down while it's transferring energy in the other one while it's trying to increase, but its speed's not increasing. So the motion has to go that way. Well, uh, does that make sense? Is that, is that, am I kind of in the same direction of what all this math uh, is saying? Maybe uh, this is all gyroscopes are not well understood. And gyroscopic copy phenomena. Uh, there's a, I, I have a friend in uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Respik, I think it's pronounced, I use Ubazimov. I know I murdered him that name. Yeah, he may be watching, or he may watch on uh, later on. But uh, he has uh, written some papers uh, on gyroscopic phenomena. One uh, in particular based on an experiment that he did. And they don't, he doesn't get the same answer that they get in the textbook. And, uh, you know, this is a whole area that needs to be worked on. But, it, but since it, it impinges on Newtonian mechanics, uh, there, the powers that be in physics are absolutely opposed to uh, uh, Letting it be known that their that their basis of their all their physics is uh, faulty. You know, it was sort of like in electromagnetism uh, the other day. I uh, I showed uh, a, a, a hairpin uh, ampere hairpin pendulum, and apparently uh, there was free energy. Uh, well, after he did that experiment, uh, they. They uh, froze him out at MIT, so he went to another university, Northeastern, I believe. But uh, you can't get any traction uh, with the establishment. They, they've, they've got all the avenues blocked up. You know, they, uh, they uh, require their people to only read certain journals. You know, like uh, established one. So the, all the other journals aren't read by the people who control things. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very sad situation. Nick, do you have something? Your my screen has Nick in the in the middle of it. Yeah, no, think, no Nick doesn't have his video on. I think. Yeah, I don't. I just don't have the video, so it just okay, has Okay, well, name. did you have any, uh, anything to say? Uh, I, yeah, you, you addressed uh, my comment about uh, uh, Newton's hand-waving. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't that Newtonian physics doesn't forbid it, it just doesn't cover it, because it's, the... It's, yeah, it doesn't give the right answer. It gives an answer. Yeah, but it's it's sort of saying I'm going to neglect this aspect of the mechanics um, purposely, so that when that aspect that he's neglecting becomes significant, then of course he's not going to get the right answer. Anyways, I that would just. Yeah, that's asking it. my question for him. And your idea of downgrading time in one of your uh, presentations seems to be correct because Kushki says, no, don't let the time be in the denominator like F equals MA, where A is second time derivative. But uh, use that other formula, uh, the uh, M times the average velocity times the velocity gain is, is the average force. Uh, uh, which has then the oh, divided by the distance, which then has the distance in the denominator. So, uh, what your idea of downgrading time seems to be fair, be in line with Gushki's thinking, uh, where he doesn't want time in the denominator, he wants the distance in the denominator. Yeah, 
far as uh, force functions are concerned. Yeah, I think that makes it a more physical model than doing it with time yeah, and yeah, nominator. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I would agree with that. Any other questions? I might just comment briefly, uh, Denny. First, uh, great presentation. Um, I quote your book in one of my articles, as you may have noticed. Um, I think one of the big pro problems in this work and a lot of the other uh, work we've talked about is we don't know the mechanism of motion. The Newton's laws and even the ones you described, uh, the modified ones, um, are descriptions of what happens. They're not an explanation of the mechanism of how something moves. And without that explanation, uh, at a more fundamental level, uh, I think we're caught in a... Um, a, a circular uh, uh, cage, as it were. And I'll end there. And uh, I, I just wanted to point out that we need to know how things move. As, lo as long as we're hung up on only descriptions of the observed motion, we're sort of at, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, maybe you could call it a first grade level of physics compared to a second grade or third grade level of physics. Because after all, physics is how things work. And one of the most fundamental questions which remain unanswered in all of this discussion is how does any object, a particle or a large object like the earth or whatever, move? Uh, I'll, I'll end my little rant there. Thank you. I have one comment on that, and that is momentum seems to be, like you say, just a description of what's happening. We have mass moving at this velocity, whereas Correct. I think energy goes one step further, even though we may not really understand all the bells and whistles and um, under energy. Energy at least is say saying, hey, this is the physical cause of this physical effect that we're seeing. So I okay, see well, energy, energy is trying to address that question of how things are happening. Good comment. In other words, we're, we're trying to, uh, or we, we are eventually, uh, through our st studies, realizing that we really need to focus on the mechanism of things rather than the description you know, like, you know, just all, all of this stuff about the description of, of motion. Uh, you know, even a child can describe that, well, gee, that uh, that ball moved from here to there. Uh, you know, that that's not re really physics science. Uh, I, you know, we need to get a little deeper. And, of course, my, my work focuses on that, uh, if I may add that plug. Thank you. Yeah, and Gutsky seemed to give energy a more prominent focus than um, momentum. Yeah, yeah, he, his is an energy over momentum uh, mechanics. Which, for, for what it's worth, is consonant with my thinking uh, on the subject uh, over the last number of years. Um, however, I, I must confess that I'm not convinced that this sort of hybrid uh, solution of, of Gucci's is, is ideal. But but his thinking is certainly parallel to the thinking I, I I've had you know which I mentioned earlier about the sort of um, slight artificiality of momentum and and in electrical engineering charge. Yeah, Ian, uh, I wanted to ask you. Um, so you mentioned the difference between mv and uh, say one half mv squared. So one half mv squared is the kinetic energy formula, and mv is uh, the momentum formula. Uh, now, if you're familiar with uh, draft science, you know, he has this gigantic thing where he's saying that one half mv squared uh, isn't real, I guess. I mean, is, does that uh, have to do with this discussion? So I didn't get what you said there, um, Franklin. Uh, some science, uh, craft yeah, science. Draft, draft science. His name's Gary, and uh, one of his main rants is that he's trying to disprove the kinetic energy formula 
Yeah, I think you might have referred uh, some of that to us some time ago. Well, m m my first uh, reaction is is the opposite, Franklin. I, I mean, I, I, I think that energy is fundamental. You know, whatever about explanation versus description, um, and and that momentum is a bit of a, a made, made up concept. You see, if you just take a very simple example of like a a, a small mass. Uh, traveling at a particular speed and, and a large mass traveling at a particular speed and then they collide and then you, you take the the some of the masses and uh, you you work out what the um what the speed or what the velocity of of the combined mass would be obviously the bigger mass will have a bigger effect it might be going in in, in the direction that the bigger mass was going in but you can cal you can do it and you can calculate that but on the other hand you can do exactly the same um a half mv squared for the, the little object and half mv squared for the for the big object and and calculate what v would be you'll obviously get a different answer because one is v and the other is v squared um but but if you work it on the basis of momentum which i think is what the textbooks tend to do uh, you will find that there's a, a deficit in energy um uh, you know uh, so so where where did that if energy is conserved where did that energy go it, it's just an anomaly and uh, I, I think the, the classic textbooks say, oh, uh, yes, that energy went in uh, uh, sound when the objects um, well, collide. Well, I think the, the difficulty I have is that you'd think that uh, the momentum is like energy and the kinetic energy is the energy. You'd think they'd be equal, but clearly MV does not equal one half MV squared. See, that's got... <laughs> That I, I can't, you know, can't uh, reconcile um, that differences. I mean, and to, to, to get to, um, you know, uh, the question of, you know, what is motion? You know, I, I feel like so momentum uh, would strictly just be uh, a mass times the velocity because I, I feel that as uh, the mass goes by some space, you know, if you pretend that, you know, there is a physical ether or something, that's just... Uh, the number of those particles that that particular mass is going by so that you know so that would kind of motivate you know why is it it's just mv and that one half mv squared i suppose you know and i did some uh because i didn't personally believe the conservation of momentum myself that if you have something that's going in a circle and you reduce the radius by just half that actually the speed increases like four times which is, just seems absurd, um, but in fact, it happens, right? But that that's trying to conserve, like if you think of it being the number of particles a, a particular mass has to go by, if that has to remain the same, then uh, you know, changing the distance by that much tells you that you have to increase the speed by that much to keep the same number of particles by going by, I, I don't know, but that, that's sort of my rant. <laughs> um. Yeah, Dennis, yeah. Dennis. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you covered it or, or just didn't focus on it, but I think one of the keys to Gutsky's work is that rather than classical treatment of um, rotational motion and linear motion being separate and connect, you know, rotational motion and, I mean, rotational energy and um, linear energy being separate, he combine he he talks about the conservation of the of the combination. Yeah, I, I did mention that, but maybe I was going too fast. Uh, yeah, uh, the conservation of angular momentum has to be about either the center of mass or a fixed point. Uh, and and if it is, uh, then it should be conserved in an isolated system. And linear momentum, you know, as a vector now, uh, uh, Glusky only refers to complex numbers, which are basically two vectors rather than three vectors. But uh, momentum as a vector is, uh, uh, in Newtonian mechanics, is conserved. But he doesn't even even see doesn't even see two dimensional momentum being conserved, except that he has this. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, 
while you're looking, it just seemed to me that that change in paradigm from keeping the two separate to combining them in terms of conservation was a critical step to understanding this phenomenon of inertial propulsion. Yes, uh, uh, D'Alembert after Newton showed that uh, work is forced through distance and momentum, which is work is energy, and momentum is uh, forced through time. So uh, dividing the first force through distance by distance, you get force with distance in the denominator equals something. And dividing the second by t, you get force as something with t in the denominator. That's the, uh, that's the key way of, of Godfrey's looking, Godfrey's looking at it, as far as I can tell. And uh, he says that no, uh, time is uh, not the right variable to have in a denominator in general. It should be a uh, distance. Uh, but see, distance is three-dimensional. Uh, so that he gets around this problem by using complex numbers as two vectors where you can multiply, you don't can't just, you can not only just add linear combinations of those vectors, you can multiply them together. <coughs> it makes sense. It gives you something that makes sense physically. And, uh, but then the problem is, what about uh, a three-dimensional device like uh, the uh, scissoring of the, uh, uh, the uh, gyros in uh, Mike Gamble's uh, slideshow, and in it, which was to his talk. And uh, I, I mentioned that to Gushi. I said, I said he ran this book by him before I published it. And uh, he, uh, uh, I think, tried to, maybe one or at least one of the two methods I suggested in my appendix, and uh, didn't get very far. And I didn't, I didn't, that didn't surprise me because he is a man who has a, a definite physical intuition. He's not a mathematician. Thanks, Harry, and thanks to everyone for joining in.